Uh, we are the South College High School. My name is Danny Roby. I'm Thomas Diebold. And I'm Matt Sarava. And now we're juniors. Before we begin, I'd like to give a very special thanks to Dean D'Angelo, as well as Associate Dean Kelly, and our SJU student advisor, Brendan Coughlin, for all the help that he has lent us in finding our investment strategy. The ARC investment strategy, a diversified and innovative portfolio centered around bold, futuristic, and innovative solutions from the mind of Kathy Wood. Using the principles of her investment strategy, we believe innovation to be the primary metric when we evaluate companies to invest in. Kathy Wood herself has over $50 billion in total asset management. Some of these levels of focus can include AI, DNA sequencing, robotics, energy storage, as well as blockchain technology, all innovations that are dedicated towards solving global needs. Our team communication first was centered around having a OneNote and text group chat where all members of the team could converse about investment decisions, as well as doing individual and team research to aid that OneNote and group chat. Of course, a group approval and shared PowerPoint allowed all team members to ac accurately collaborate in our presentation and the ability to buy or sell a stock with team approval 100% of the time. So the pitfalls of investing, greed, overconfidence, loss aversion, and belief perseverance are four key factors we identified that can make investing so tricky. During our uh, experience, we are sure to avoid these and take these into account. All right, so to take a look at some global macroeconomic events, we have COVID-19, which most economies are still recovering from, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which not only affects those two economies, but also the U.S. with massive aid packages that we've been sending. Climate change and inflation are also some global <coughs> macroeconomic events. And then to focus in a little bit more on the U.S. economy, we have increased volatility, high inflation, high interest rates, a lower unemployment rate, and um, recently we've been dealing with a little bit of bank uncertainty with Silicon Valley Bank. So if you look here, over to the right, we have a snapshot of some of the most innovative uh, stocks we have in our portfolio. And as a team, we identified six major challenges that these stocks all address. So for number one, we had responsible energy. Number two, we had bold biotech or DNA sequencing. Number three, we had transforming AI, which might be a real headache for teachers across the world, but it really is making a huge impact. Number four, we had safe transportation. Five, efficient e-commerce and cryptocurrency. So a lot of countries are moving away from the dominance of the US dollar, or trying to, so cryptocurrency could be a possible solution. Number, and number six, we had future communication. Thanks, Tom. So the first stock we want to identify in our innovative portfolio is Shopify in the tech sector of the market. We bought 1,000 shares of Shopify for about $42 a share. So why did we choose Shopify? Just as a disclaimer, before we start our talk about Shopify, we want to identify this QR code that you can choose to scan with your phones, and the judges have it on your paper, that you can look more into the aspects of Shopify that we're going to identify here. So Shopify is an e-commerce platform that allows small to mid-sized businesses to grow, manage, and control their business on this globalized platform. It's a leader in e-commerce software, which is an industry that will only continue to grow as we become more reliant on technology. Shopify takes a dual purpose in drop shipping, where individuals can come in and facilitate and advertise for these small businesses, which brings more people onto sites and it adds that innovative aspect. Shopify is offering or operating at a current net loss, meaning they're mitigating current cash flow to build for the future. But the quote from the president that we have up here that says, if you look at our seven years since IPO, we were profitable five out of the seven. We like being profitable. We're going to work toward that. It shows that while they are at this net loss, they're still looking out for shareholders. They're still trying to profit so people don't lose. And then the last thing we want to identify with Shopify is this commerce components, which tasks to the larger scale businesses that allows Shopify aspects to be on your large business scale and intentionally builds unparalleled customer experiences for any device. From a quantitative point of view, Shopify beat the recent projected earnings by favorable numbers that we have on this bottom figure. It controls 10% of a trillion dollar American e-commerce market, which as we said will only grow. The PE ratio at Shopify is at a negative 17.4 due to this net loss that they're operating at, but that 17.4 number is still stronger than Microsoft's 28, Apple's 26, and NVIDIA's 133 that we have on the slide right here, which shows that the value for the stock you're buying is stronger than those other companies in the same sector. 
Since we bought Shopify, we've seen a 4% increase in the stock's price, and we can attribute that to raising rates and then shareholders trying to jump in on that growth. The second trade we made under our portfolio that we want to highlight is at Exxon in the energy sector of the market. We bought 250 shares of Exxon for about $111 a share. So why Exxon? Again, as a disclaimer, the QR code is up there to scan if you don't believe us about Exxon, because obviously when you see Exxon, it defies what we've talked about so far, as you might see, right? Exxon isn't as innovative as some of these other companies, but we're gonna prove you wrong on that. Exxon, the first thing we wanna highlight is this net zero ambition. As we all know, energy, carbon dioxide is released into the air, and that's what causes global warming in the ozone layer, but Exxon is attempting a net zero ambition, that's the future goal, with this carbon capture storage, which essentially takes the carbon dioxide that's emitted into the air and reuses it into new forms of energy, which is improving the environment. They also look to utilize hydrogen as a new form of cost efficient and environmentally efficient energy, which uh, other companies won't be able to compete with in the future. And then Exxon is a socially responsible ESG company. This commitment statement that we have down here from the Exxon Investor Relations pages shows that Exxon is tasked with improving energy access, improving efficiency, mitigating emissions, sustainability, outreach, and job creation, which are all things that we like to see in the fundamentals of a company. From a quantitative look at Exxon, the price to earnings ratio is 8.41, which is extremely low compared to the rest of the stock market, which obviously shows a high value for our stock. And it is even low compared to the energy sector, which tends to all have low price to earnings ratios, especially its top competitor, Chevron, the next biggest company, it has a whole point lower, which obviously greater value for the stock. Exxon offers a 3% dividend yield, which guarantees money into our pockets regardless of stock performance, which we like to see. And then just as we saw with Shopify, it is operating at this recent long-term growth, which means as future long-term investors, we like to see that Exxon's investing for the future and will only continue to grow as we hold that stock. And then as we saw an increase with Shopify, Exxon is very varied results because it's such a large company in this large field, the Exxon will be incredibly affected by our volatile economy. So as the economy might start to slow, Exxon will come down. As it will start to increase, Exxon will come up because it's such a large company. All right, so to take a look here, we have the three major benchmarks. The S&P is on the top, the Dow is in the middle, and the NASDAQ is on the bottom. So our portfolio realized a negative 2.03% loss, but we're not focused on that because we're focused on building for the future and finding our next big thing. But as you can see, for the S&P and the Dow, we follow most of the trends. We actually beat the Dow in the last three months. They're operating at a... 3.08% loss, and we're only at 2.03%. The NASDAQ obviously performed a little bit better, but this can be, um, this is expected because we're obviously not as diversified because we're focused mainly on big, innovative stocks. Thank you, Tom. So in conclusion, investing in innovation benefits the future of society. Taking innovation from Kathy Wood and Arc Investments, we believe that innovation is investing in the future. Thank you. Any questions? I guess I'm going to start on this. You know, you know, Kathy Wood's a bad word right now. You know that? So it, it's funny. Being a tech investor, that's my day job. It's, it's funny how she went from genius to idiot. And by the way, she'll probably be genius again in another few years. So I'd love your thoughts on that. You guys went into a sector that's really beat up. You, you picked your patron saint to some extent who's currently out of favor. Do you view this as a contrarian strategy or you're going to be right in the long run? Tell, tell me why you decided to go down this route. Um, I think going in before COVID, a lot of people might have thought similarly to what people think now about Kathy Wood. Um, but as you can see, when COVID hit, which no one knew was going to happen, her big innovative tech stocks, they boomed like Zoom. She made a fortune. So right now, people might not be supporting her, but all it takes is for her to identify that next big thing. And there are other people like Catherine Boyle with American Dynamism who also work towards finding that next big thing. Um, American Dynamism is a little bit more of a venture capitalist, but we believe in Kathy Wood, and we think that she is focused on finding that next big thing. And as Tom said, you mentioned long-term investing. So these aspects, they're not short-term goals. These are things that will change the world in the future. So these are holding investments that will go into the long-term for our stocks. Yeah. yeah, I was intrigued with the love of Kathy Wood also. That was interesting. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, so 
What's your view on her style of investing if you're going to have a more prolonged period of higher interest rates and higher inflation? I think a lot of the argument pro Kathy Wood would be she did well with when you, money was cheap, zero interest rates, zero inflation. So does that change your view at all? Or do you think that that's something that even with those fundamentals in place, this philosophy could still work? I think Kathy Wood, or I think interest rates and everything, they're not always gonna be this high. They will come back down, and Kathy Wood still will maintain her reputation and step in once these interest rates are back down to where they were. So I think as a team, we still think Kathy Wood will hit big again, and we believe a lot in her portfolio. And I'd also like to add to that as well. I think there is a little bit of relatability on Kathy Wood. Um, she's basically a self-made woman in finance, but she is dedicated to investing long-term, and you know, trying to figure out the philosophy behind investing, I think is really important to our group, I'd say. And um, just kind of, I guess, zeroing in on her philosophy and what she views uh, is the most important factors to consider when investing, that, that I'd say would be one of the biggest reasons on why we ended up choosing her as, like you said, our patron saint. <laughs> Well, you have great confidence, which is, which is great. You have to have conviction. And I like that you added behavioral economics, overconfidence, uh, loss aversion. That's a big part of what we look at when we're managing money, so you incorporating some nice features uh, and good confidence and enthusiasm. Right. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, I think the Dean's point in, in is his as well. I commend you for putting a stake in the ground. Um, in the investment world, sometimes that's hard to do. Um, when you put your name reputation, um, you know, your, your whole, um, I guess, investment thesis um, on one certain area, so I commend you for that. Um, with your six challenges, you know, one through six, how did you come up with those specific six challenges? So we identified our six challenges. Um, we pretty much just looked at the world and global economics and looked for a global need in areas that are gonna be expanding in the future. For example, AI. I read an article the other day that said, Chat GPT could give me a stock prediction. So not that I would trust that, but it's possible. So I think we just looked at global need, expanding fields, and we uh, picked stocks that address our challenges. So what were there, as a group, were there originally like, you know, 10 challenges and you narrowed down to six, or how did you come up with those exact six criteria? I'm just curious. I think we just mainly, um, we just went through global need and these were the six that stand out to us. Uh, I don't think we had any more than this. I think these are just the six that we found at first and the six that we chose to address. Thank you. Nice job. Of course.